Quoi video for Season of Discovery. Now, today we're doing episode number 8 in my gold making video series for Phase 2, where we're covering different ways to make gold, farm gold, invest gold, and just covering everything gold making for Phase 2. In this video, we're talking about most likely the best gold farm in Phase 2 from my perspective and my point of view based on the information we have so far, and this gold farm could end up being absolutely not. Now, today we have two different farms. Well, there's multiple farms and there's multiple ways to farm this, but we're going to be highlighting two main ones. Today we're doing wild vines farming, we're doing it in the hinterland, so you can also do it in Stranglethorn Vale, but personally I do prefer doing it in the hinterlands. The mobs over here are level 43 plus, you can also find level 40 plus ones, so it's a high level farm. You want to be level 14 before doing the farm? You could possibly go here at level 37, 38, maybe even sooner depending on your class and your gear, but you can definitely go here a little bit sooner because targeting one mob here, you can see he's level 41, and there are some level 40s around here as well, so like level 40, 41, 43 rare right in front of me as well, level 42, level 40. So between level 40 and 42 seems to be the general levels of the mobs right here, and the locations we're farming in right now is this. We have location 1, 2, and 3, and the furthest to the left is level 40 to 42, the one in the middle is 41 to 44, and the one all the way down, or like in the middle basically, circle number 3, is a little bit higher level. Now, you're once again farming for wild wine, alternatively you have one farm in Strangleton Vale as well, located right here, which is also a wild wine farm, basically you're just farming trolls, and you're hoping for the wild wine drop. Based on my, my experience here, it's about a 5% drop chance, like should be about 5%, so 20 kills equals 1 wild vine. Now, real quick, before we talk more about the farm, if you want to have early access to every single gold making video that I'm personally doing in Season of Discovery, check out my gold making classic WoW. Classic WoW gold making guide through the link down below in the video description or the pinned comment. This is a full fledged gold making guide that, I, that I've made for Classic WoW. It contains 134 pages smacked full of gold making information. It has gold farms, investments, professional advice, even like pretty much everything you want to know. Flipping on the auction house, what to flip, why to flip, and just talking about that stuff as well. It also includes access to a private Discord server, and also you're getting every single update sent to you for free after purchasing the guide. In addition to that, you have access to every single video in this video series, and you will have early access to videos in Phase 2 and Phase 3 and so on. We had about 20 videos in early access in Phase 1, covering gold farms and investments and stuff like that in Phase 1, and we'll be doing the same thing in Phase 2 as well. So if you want to minimax your gold making and make as much gold as possible, Definitely check that out. It also supports me at the same time. So if you want to make more gold plus support me a little bit, then once again the links will be down below. That being said, why are we farming for wild wine? There are a couple of reasons for this. So let's just pull up the wow head right here so you can see exactly why we're farming for wild wine. I'm just going to drag this a little bit to the side. So there we go. Scrolling down, we can see what it's dropped by, which isn't really that important to us, but it's the Reagent 4, which is important for us. Here you can see exactly what wild vine is used for, and there's two main crafts that I really want to highlight. We have Dreamweave Gloves and Dreamweave Vest. Now, Dreamweave Gloves, they increase your intellect by 4, spirit by 7, and increases damage and healing by magical spells and effects by up to 18, and it's a level 40 item. Dreamweave Circlet, once again level 40 item, it's a chest piece, 9 intellect, 14 spirit and 18 healing or 18 spell damage. As you can see, Dreamweave gloves they require four wild vines. Let me just double check that you can see that right here. It requires four wild vines for the gloves and it requires six wild vines for the vest. So a bunch of wild vines required right there. In addition to that, it's also required in the wild leather craft. Many of these are not really relevant, but the bottom two wild leather shoulders and wild leather vests are in fact relevant. And we also have the Wild Vine Potion, which could end up being used in, for example, a Ruin, or even just being used in general, to give you both health and mana. So, Wild Vines are really, really useful. Now, mostly for me, it's a dream weave crafting here that is um, driving up the demand factor for, for Wild Vines, making it so that every caster and healer that uses cloth wants to have 10 Wild Vines for their pre -abyss. And this will probably end up being pre for pretty much every single caster out there, and depending on how the 
loot table for normal gun ends up being. It could even end up being realistic abyss as well. So like it's an item that a lot of people will want to go for it. And that's why the demand will be there. And you can make a lot of gold by farming here. So... What I recommend is do this farm as early as possible. The earlier you go here, the less competition you'll have, and therefore the more more wild wines you will get as well. What you will notice though is that there's a bunch of mobs around me, so even if you're two people at the same place, it's not really a problem. By the time you two have cleared out the camp, they will start respawning again, so being two people per camp isn't really a problem. If you have mining and herbalism, you can also capitalize on even more gold per hour from the farm, but to be honest, even if you don't have a single profession, it's a really good farm to do. So just go here whenever you can, start killing the mobs, and start raking in that profit. Once again, the mobs over here in the hinterlands are level 40 plus, so you want to be a little bit high level before going here. Exactly how high level is going to be difficult to say, because it is based on your class and the gear you have, but I will say, hunters and warlocks can probably go here at level 36 and be fine. Would I recommend it? Probably not. If I had to give any general recommendations, I would say level 38 to 39, then grind out the last 1 to 2 levels by farming these mobs and getting gold while grinding out those last two levels, right? Hitting the last stretch, level 40, while smacking two birds with one stone, getting both the experience from the kills and also getting gold at the same time. It is a fantastic farm to do for those last few levels, and it's a fantastic farm to do to come back at level 40 and do the farm then as well, with probably increased efficiency. When it comes to farming while leveling versus farming at level 40, it's like... You can farm while leveling, hit two birds, one stone, or you can just get to level 40 as fast as possible, do the raid, get some gear, and come back and farm a little bit more effectively, and be a little bit more efficient. That being said, a bunch of people, myself included, want to keep as many quests as possible for level 40. That way we can come back and do the quests at level 40. So if you're not doing dungeon farming, then combining a mob farm with a gold farm to avoid doing quests could be the way to go. And it could even end up being almost as effective as doing dungeon farming, in which case you're farming experience and gold at the same time. I really, really do have faith in this farm being one of the best for phase 2, not just because of the wild wine, but the wild wines will help you get a steady gold per hour from the farm, but also if you go a little bit more to the middle, the mobs are level 43 to 44, which means they can start dropping green items that are going to be level 39 and 40, giving you best in slot green and blue items so it's a really good place to farm for consistent gold per hour and it's also a really good place to be in to farm for previous items both in terms of greens and blues in addition to that, they also give mage weave cloth and silk cloth, and they also give something called a tribal troll necklace, or troll tribal necklace, which can be handed in for more gold experience or reputation. Basically, you get experience and reputation by handing it in, but by being level 40, you will then get gold instead of experience, so you can either hand it in for more raw gold, or you can sell it to someone on the auction house who wants to buy them for an alt to get experience instead. So, once again, really good farm, really solid farm, a really RNG farm for the greens and blues, while also giving a consistent gold per hour from both the wild wines and the cloth at the same time. If you are testing out the farm in phase 2, please let me know in the gold per hour. I will probably test it out quite extensively on my Twitch streams as well, and the link to my Twitch is going to be down below in the video description. I'm going to be streaming basically my entire phase 2 progress, so feel free to throw me a follow and check me out on Twitch. Either way, that's the video for today, hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did leave a like down below and um, yeah that's pretty much it thank you so much for watching as always and i'll see you again very soon